A new carbon capture facility at the Luoyang A power station will operate around the clock in a Victorian first. The research project has attracted state and federal funding, but some in the community have questioned its timing. It will take a year to build and cost around $5 million, $650,000 from Brown Coal Innovation Australia and the rest from the Japanese company that's driving the pilot. What uh, BCIA are doing through this process is looking at ways and means you can actually reduce that power generation right at the start in using carbon capture storage technology. It's the third carbon capture research plant to be set up in the Latrobe Valley, but the first to take a detailed look at the capture process. The previous plants have run in batch mode, so you, you get in in the morning, you start them up, you run some tests and some experiments, and you shut them down at night. This is looking for long-term effects, what happens to, to the solvents, what happens to the process. The agency says it will be at least two years before the plant will start to yield solid information, but it could eventually help reduce the cost of widespread carbon capture technology. By reducing the, the CO2 emissions, by developing carbon capture technologies that are applicable to the valley, it makes the, uh, the, the future use of the coal much more environmentally sustainable. Community groups say they welcome any efforts to clean up industry in the Latrobe Valley, but they've questioned the timing of the announcement by Brown Coal Innovation Australia. It's really important to clean up the industry in the valley, but I also think that they need to start looking at the um, first basis of actually capping the mine, cleaning up the mine that has caused so much damage to the community. It's only a matter of time before this happens again. Tom Kelly, Win News. Good afternoon, I'm Nikki Markovic. A Latrobe Valley community group says another blaze at the Hazelwood coal mine has prompted residents to consider moving away from Morwell. The CFA says last week's fire is likely to have originated from the blaze in February that blanketed the area in smoke. Voices of the Valley says it's worrying that a fire can break out in a mine in the middle of winter. This is Wind News. Tonight, disability carers welcome a plan to stop abuse. Dennis Napthine takes a stand on unconventional gas mining. And hitting the catwalk for cancer research. The Premier has assured anti-fracking campaigners Victoria's ban on unconventional gas mining will stand as long as he's heading the state. Dennis Napthine's promise comes after a meeting with regional Victorian lobbyists but it's not calmed all fears. Attending Sheepvention, the Premier stressed he puts agriculture first, especially when it comes to onshore gas mining. While I'm Premier of the state, there'll be no onshore gas exploration or fracking because we want to make sure that we look after our clean, green agricultural production. While campaigners were pleased with the promise, they continued to inform residents today about legislation introduced under Labor, which they say threatens southwest Victoria. Well, essentially we didn't realise that there were mining leases over our land and that those leases can be taken up pretty much at any time. If you refuse that initially, it will be, you'll be told by VCAT how much you get as compensation and they walk on and, and mine. The main safeguard, a moratorium on unconventional gas mining, ends in July 2015. Residents continue to voice concerns at coalition convened meetings across Victoria. People live here because it's beautiful, it's clean, it's a great place to raise children and when you get an industrialised landscape, that very lifestyle is threatened. Lobbyists are determined to convince both sides of politics there's good reason for a permanent ban. We've surveyed a number of towns, four have finished, and the general average of people that do not want to see this um, gas industry take a foothold here is 96%. Raymond Martin, Win News.